It's time for more RX-7 adventures. Hello everyone, how you doing? I hope you're all doing excellent. Today what we're going to be working on is the idle for the RX-7. As you all know, we got it started pretty recently and we're able to get it to idle once it's at operating temperature and we're able to get it to run and even drive. However, we recently activated the flex fuel sensor and we added some flex fuel to the vehicle. Flex fuel is notorious for vehicles, especially those not equipped with flex fuel from the factory, for causing rough cold starts and idles, especially in a rotary engine. Now, before we get started, if you don't know who I am or what we do here at More Garage, please check the playlist up above. It's going to be a link to the FCRX7 build that we're working on. You can get acquainted with what we do here at More Garage. As to the title, we are going to be wiring our Haltech 1500 Elite ECU to handle the stock bypass air control valve or idle control valve from the FCRX7. Now this was removed a long time ago with the emissions equipment and uh, I didn't think I had it but I found it luckily in a bag of miscellaneous parts. So I'm in here in the garage today to test this out. So, before we get started, let me show you how the car starts and tries to idle right now as a baseline. And I'm not going to let it warm up so that we can actually test this out at a cold start setting. So as you can see, I need to give it quite a bit of throttle even to get it to start up and hold any sort of operating RPM. So we definitely are in need of an idle air control valve. Luckily, I was able to find the stock one. So we're going to start preparing that to get wired into the Haltech harness. Also, don't be alarmed by the dramatic sound. Uh, we do not have an exhaust on this yet, so that's straight downpipe. So just set that aside for now. Okay, so here is our stock valve, and this is the connection from the stock harness. Now I'm going to clean this up a bit, but I also found when I took it off that this connector, on both of them, is clearly a hack job wired in. Uh, so that may have been part of the problem, and this was barely even connected. So no doubt that when I was running this back in the day in its completely stock version, that uh, I don't even know if this BAC was working. So what I'm going to do now is strip this back so we can have a nice OEM looking connection and get as far back on these wires as I can. So I'm going to remove this kind of putty looking cover and see if I can solder in some new connections. So I've got our wire stripped here and I'm assuming that since this control valve works on a constant 12 volt and then a pulsed input to control the solenoid, I'm assuming that this larger gauge looks about 14 or so, which I happen to have here. And this looks like a 22, the smallest I have is 16, is probably for the signal input. So I'm going to do my very best to line that up when I connect this with the digital pulsed output which has the same configuration from the Haltech. It has a 12 volt constant supply and a frequency input here. So I went ahead and sprayed this thing down with electrical connection cleaner 
And now we're gonna go ahead and attach our new wires to create a pigtail. Now, before I terminate that pigtail with the pin for the connector to the Haltech, which is gonna go right in here, which is a spare digital pulsed output four from the terminated, pre-terminated S4 harness, we're gonna go ahead and, sorry for the bright light, remove this block off plate and reinstall our BAC valve. All right, so we've got the BAC valve reinstalled right here. Again, DPO4 is what we're going to use, and I've already tested it. So I know that the connection on the right-hand side with the connector sticking up is the constant 12 volt. So I'm going to go ahead and pin our pigtail into the Haltech connector, making sure that I keep that orientation. All right, guys, so here we go. We've got our makeshift pigtail harness connected to the factory connector for the BAC and we're going to go ahead and switch to the inside of the car and see the Haltech settings for this unit. Okay guys, so we're inside the car. We have the laptop connected to our Elite 1500 ECU. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to settings. We're going to go to functions. We're going to just type in idle. We're going to find idle control. We're going to check the box to enable that. We need to assign our output. We know that is DPO4, double click. And we have our connection. Long-term trim is enabled from the closed loop O2 function with the wideband installed. We're gonna to go to idle control. And I already preset this to 33 Hertz. I'm gonna mess with a few settings because there's multiple resources online that say different settings uh, to make this successful and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I set the stall offset to 500 just as a first setting we're going to go ahead and apply that we'll reboot the ECU hmm. well I can hear the idle air control pulsing I'm not sure if you can hear that um, so we know we've got a good connection Go ahead and give it a start and see what happens. Okay, so you can still hear the idle air control valve pulsing, so I'm going to go ahead and shut off the ECU for now. What we do know is that that immediately allowed us to start up and maintain an idle, but it was revving up. So what I'm going to do now is mess with a few settings from what I found online, and then I'm going to give you guys the summary on what's the best frequency that I found to work for the S4 FC. All right, guys, so here we go. I want to show you that flex fuel is up to 67% ethanol. I messed around with the BAC valve settings for quite some time to achieve the best result. I dropped it down to 10 hertz and 60% output max. Um, those are the main things that I changed, and it does still idle very high, but the point is we can get it fired up and idling even with this flex fuel setup before we've seen the tuner. So let me show you what that sounds like now.
Okay, you guys, so that's how I set it up. Now, if you have a better way to set it up, please let us know in the comments below. This video is meant to be an open discussion about this process because a lot of it is buried in forums and there's limited resources, so I thought I'd start with my best attempt and see how good we could get it. If you have any great ideas, please leave them in the comments below and I will happily test them out and put them on video. So there you have it, a quick tutorial about how an amateur gets his VAC valve set up on his S4 RX-7 with the Haltech 1500 Elite ECU. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.